Is virtual reality gaming dying, or is it just waiting for its next big breakthrough? With VR headsets still being a niche market, only 1.34% of Steam users currently use one. It's easy to wonder whether this technology has stalled. But looking at the history, the present state, and the future of VR, the answer is far more complicated. Let's dive into the world of virtual reality and find out if VR gaming is truly on its last legs, or just biding its time for a major comeback. Welcome to NerdSection.com. VR gaming has a long and fascinating history, stretching back much further than most people realize. The concept of virtual reality dates back to the 1960s with the invention of the Sensorama, a machine that simulated different environments using stereoscopic 3D images, sound, vibrations, and even scents. This was one of the first attempts to create an immersive experience, though it was far from what we think of as VR today. In the 1980s and 90s, VR technology began taking small steps toward the the gaming world. Companies like Atari and Sega experimented with early VR headsets, but the technology wasn't ready yet. Bulky hardware, low resolution graphics, and high costs made these early attempts commercially unviable. One of the most infamous VR failures was the Nintendo Virtual Boy, released in 1995. It promised 3D gaming, but instead delivered a headache-inducing red and black display and lackluster gameplay, leading to its rapid discontinuation. Fast forward to the early 2010s and VR made a dramatic comeback. The Oculus Rift Kickstarter campaign in 2012 reignited interest in VR, proving that with the right technology, it could finally become viable. Shortly after, major companies jumped in. HTC Vive, PlayStation VR, and Valve Index all launched their own headsets, and suddenly, VR gaming was no longer just a futuristic dream. The real proof of VR's potential came with its first killer apps. Games that made owning a headset worthwhile. Beat Saber, released in 2018, became a massive hit, blending rhythm-based gameplay with lightsaber-style slicing action. It was the perfect showcase of what VR could do, offering an experience that simply wasn't possible on a traditional screen. Then came Half-Life. Alex in 2020, the first full-length VR exclusive game from a major developer. As a prequel to the beloved Half-Life series, it delivered an unparalleled level of interactivity, proving that VR wasn't just a gimmick, it could provide deep, narrative-driven experiences on par with traditional gaming. But despite these successes, VR still struggles to break into the mainstream. According to the Steam Hardware and Software Survey, only 1.34% of Steam users currently own a VR headset. That's an incredibly small percentage, especially when compared to the widespread adoption of standard gaming PCs and consoles. So what's holding VR back? There are a few key issues. First, the cost. High-end headsets like the Valve Index or the MetaQuest Pro are expensive, and even cheaper options like the MetaQuest 2 or PlayStation VR 2 still require a significant investment. Second, the space requirements. VR needs physical room to move, which many gamers simply don't have. Third, the accessibility problem. VR can be physically uncomfortable for some people, with issues like motion sickness still affecting a portion of users. Despite these challenges, VR continues to evolve and new games keep pushing the limits of what's possible. In 2024, Alien Rogue Incursion is set to bring the terrifying world of the Alien franchise to VR, blending survival horror with immersive mechanics. Other titles like Rezzle's Player VR are proving that VR isn't just for traditional gaming, it's also being used for sports training, simulations, and even therapy. So where is VR gaming headed in the future? While its mainstream adoption has been slow, the technology itself is improving. Valve is reportedly working on a new wireless VR headset, codenamed Deckard, which could solve one of VR's biggest barriers, the need for external tracking and a tethered PC. They're also working on Fremont, a SteamOS-based console that could further integrate VR into the living room experience. New gaming concepts are also on the horizon. Goodnight Universe, an upcoming VR game, allows players to control a psychic baby using eye-tracking technology, pushing the boundaries of immersive storytelling. As headsets become more advanced, offering higher resolutions, wider fields of view, and better comfort, VR's accessibility will continue to improve. 
In conclusion, while VR gaming hasn't reached the mainstream heights that some expected, it's far from dead. Instead, it's a growing niche that thrives on innovation, delivering experiences that simply aren't possible in traditional gaming. As technology improves and costs decrease, we could see VR gaming finally reach its long-awaited breakout moment. Whether that happens in the next few years or takes another decade remains to be seen. But one thing's for sure, VR isn't going away anytime soon. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out our video about the top RPG games releasing in 2025. See you next time. Happy gaming.